Hi everyone, my name is Zoe, but most people know me as ZA Reptiles, and today I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks for becoming a pet influencer. So if you're like me, you spend a lot of time scrolling through Instagram and watching YouTube videos, all that has to do with the animals. For me personally, it's reptiles. For any of you watching this video, because you are subscribed to me or you follow me, probably reptiles for you as well. Now I'm by no means a big channel at all. I'm still a relatively small channel. You know, I don't have a huge following on Instagram. However, I think like 12,000 people, that's pretty amazing to me, but compared to anyone like if you look at some of the bigger ones, they have a lot more than I do. For me personally, 12,000 is just like, wow, what, huh? <laughs> but you know, compared to some other people, that's still a pre pretty relatively low number. Um, so I'm by no means a big influencer in this community. Um, however, I have found some things that work really well for me. So I do want to share those with any of you because, you know, I have a lot of people that ask about starting a YouTube channel. I have a lot of people that, you know, just ask me questions now and then about tips for growing, if I have found anything that works for me, and I have. So I'm going to share those with you today. So if you want to be a pet influencer, the first step is to have a pet. So this here is Tansy my baby bearded dragon as most of you know so if you have pets or a pet you're already on the right track now the biggest thing and a lot of people say this is that you don't need a lot of pets to have a pet channel to have an instagram account a lot of the biggest animal channels and instagrams are literally one animal like a dog or something so you don't need a ton of animals my first year of ZA Reptiles, on Instagram at least, it was just me and Arcadius, my iguana. And then for about almost a whole year after that, it was just me, Arcadius, and Phoenix, my corn snake. And that was when I started YouTube. It was just me, Arcadius, and Phoenix for quite a while. And then, you know, I got Tootsie and Pip. Um, but I didn't get animals because of YouTube and Instagram. She's still too young to just want to sit and hang out. But like I was saying, if it was still just me and Arcadius, I would have been fine with that. I would have grown Arcadius on Instagram and on YouTube. I mean, the whole reason I started YouTube was because there's a lack of iguana videos with legit iguana information so I wanted to share that I wanted to share our journey and experience with metabolic bone disease because he had it really bad and probably shouldn't have survived but he did so I wanted to share that whole story so that's why I started YouTube I didn't do it because I wanted lots of animals and the reason I have lots of animals is one because I like reptiles two because I want lots of animals three because my goal is to have a reptile education business and I do reptile programs through my work now but I want my own reptile education business and people like to hate on YouTubers for having lots of animals and sure some people probably they get all the animals to have more content to bring in more people to keep it interesting so I've had a couple people now and then comment on my videos and like, oh, you're just like all the other YouTubers, you know, you get lots of animals for the fame, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, so how can I have a reptile education business without lots of animals? See the, see the problem there? So don't feel like you need to get lots of animals because animals are a lot of work, a lot of money, and take a lot of your time. So if you're just getting them to create more content, you're in this for the wrong reason. And people will probably end up seeing right through it. 
Um, people tend to jump to those conclusions pretty quickly even if they're not true. So if they are true, people will probably see right through it. The next tip is to be original. Do things that you enjoy. Don't film things or post things you see other people doing because it's working really well for them. Sure, you can do that sometimes. Like on YouTube, room tours, reptile room tours, and meet my pets. Those are like the two huge growing videos that get you a lot of views. However, no one wants to watch those all the time. If that was all you filmed, people would be seeing the same stuff over and over again. It would be very obvious what you were doing. I film a Meet My Pets video once a year, just for an update. I filmed one last summer, which means I'll probably film the next one this summer, or the end of this summer. Um, and then my room tours, I only film those if there's like massive, massive changes. So, you know, at Christmas time, I filmed one because I love Christmas and I deck out my room and decorations. Um, I filmed one when I moved into my apartment because it was like pretty much a reptile apartment. So I want to show it off. But I only filmed one. I filmed one um, last year after college when I moved here. I filmed one in my college apartment and I filmed, actually I haven't filmed this room again. Um, I'm waiting until, I'm either going to film it before I put in my new enclosures and then film it again after my new enclosures so it can be like a before and after or I'll just wait until the new enclosures are filmed or in because you guys pretty much saw the room back in December when I did my Hermes room tour. A lot has changed though so I don't know there might be another one soon but on I only film them if there's like really huge massive changes and everything is totally different. Otherwise, you're just showing people the same exact thing all the time, totally unnecessary, and everyone does it. What makes you interesting, what makes people want to follow you, is when you have something really unique to share and to show off. And if you're doing something that's unique to you and that you really enjoy, people can tell when you enjoy doing what you're doing, and that makes them want to follow you. So, like, for me, something unique that stands me apart from other people in this hobby that I went to college to be a zookeeper. I have a lot of experience in zoos and in an aquarium. I worked at an AZA facility and now I'm a naturalist and I work at my nature center and I'm in charge of animal care. So the fact that I have that zoo background and that I actually work with animals for my job sets me apart from some of the others. So I definitely like to talk about those in videos and on Instagram because you know it's something unique to me. Figure out what sets you apart from everyone else and really utilize that because it makes you really stand out. However, the most important part is to just enjoy what you're doing and to have fun because if you enjoy it and you're having fun, everyone can tell and that makes it a lot more enjoyable to watch. If you're just doing something because you feel like you should, like a lot of pet keepers feel like they have to put out care guides. You don't have to put out care guides. A ton of people put out care guides. If you don't want to put out a care guide, and you're not going to enjoy doing it, don't do it because no one's going to want to watch it because they're going to tell that you don't enjoy it. And if you don't enjoy it, why waste your time when you can be doing something you do enjoy? I am so pale. This isn't just the camera settings. I am actually this pale. If my settings keep changing, I'm messing with my camera, so I apologize. Just trying to make myself look a little less pale. But it's hard to do because I really am pale. Um, okay, next thing. If your goal is to grow, you know, if you're doing all this, the followers really shouldn't be your priority. You shouldn't be worried about the numbers. Is it really cool to have a big following? Yeah. Is it cool to have fans? Yeah. But should that be your priority? No. Your priority is to love your animals and to just want to share them with other people that love animals and to want to connect and make friends. So the goal should not be to have the big numbers. However, you'd be lying, we'd all be lying, if we said we didn't care just a little bit and that, you know, having big numbers is kind of cool. So if 
you do want to grow. My biggest tip, and you'll hear this all the time, is consistency. I find I try to post on YouTube every week. I don't think I've ever missed a single week. I might have missed like one week back in October because I was going through some stuff. But um, I don't think I've ever really missed a single week. I usually have at least one video up. Even better is to have more than one up. So I usually don't have too much of a plan other than at least one video. If I can get up more than one video, and then I don't know if this has actually helped me or not, but I've heard from people that you should upload at a consistent time on a consistent schedule. That way people know when to expect videos from you. I don't like to give days because if I'm busy or I don't feel like filming, or I don't feel like doing my hair and I look homeless, I'm not going to make myself film. If I say a new video weekly, that gives me a whole week to come up with something, to film it, to edit it, and to post it. The thing I do stay consistent with is my upload time though. Usually I upload at 7 p.m. Once in a while if I'm running late, 7.30. If I have to go any later, I usually won't post it and I'll wait till the next day. Although I've already promised it, as long as it's before like 9 o'clock or 9.30, I'll still post it. But I always try to aim for 7 p.m. I upload them during the day, set the schedule timer thing for 7 p.m. Now that we're all in quarantine and we've got a lot of free time, I've just kind of been uploading willy-nilly whenever I feel like it because we've all got a lot of free time to watch YouTube videos. But you know, during normal living situation life on the planet, I upload at 7 p.m. Now figure out what time works for you. I personally like to do later because I feel like you know it's after dinner time, kids are out of school, that people are done work, so people are at home relaxing watching YouTube videos. I find my videos don't do very well if I post during the day when people are at work or at school um, because people are busy. They're not watching videos. Now we're in quarantine, I feel like it doesn't really matter when you upload. You know my videos are all pretty much doing the same no matter what. But kind of figure out what schedule works for you what preferred time works for you, how often you want to upload, because consistency is key. And this goes for Instagram as well. I was posting like three times a day on Instagram. Um, now I've been really busy. I try to upload at least one time on Instagram. Um, Instagram algorithm is a really weird. I haven't even really looked into it. All I know is that people hate it. <laughs> and I think it favors people that post consistently. Um, so I try not to miss a day because I don't want to disappear from my followers feeds so I post once a day I try to post three times a day my trick is to download an app called hold on I don't remember what it's called so I have two apps that I use for Instagram that have helped me tremendously and since consistently using them I have seen a lot of growth in my Instagram Recently, one of the apps has been a little weird, they're working on an update, so I haven't really used it too much, but the two apps are when to post. So this is what it looks like. So you have up here your three best times to, sorry I've got paint all over hand. You've got your three best times to post during the day, and then it shows you during the week. So those green marks are when your followers are most active, most likely to engage with your posts. So if you post at like these three times, so this must be your most engaging times of the day for your followers. So mine has been weird. Today's is actually normal, but they've been working on updating it and bettering the information. And so like for the past week or two, my times have all been like 4 a.m., 5 a.m. I'm like, I am not waking up at 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. to post to Instagram. But they're actually kind of normal today. Like 6, 15 a.m. I wouldn't do because I wasn't awake. But like 12 p.m. and 3 p.m. I can do that. So then with that information I head over to my other app which has been like the godsend of all apps and that's the preview app. So if you look right, right here it's the one with all the colorful squares. So when you open that up you get an app that looks like this and I've got tons of selfies here I haven't posted but um so what you do in this app is you can upload the photos that you want to upload to Instagram you can move them around so you can kind of design how you want your Instagram feed to look 
you can edit them. So I click that one, selfie with Samoa. If I open it, I can come down here and use all these different filters. If I click up here, I've got lots of more options. Um, unfortunately, you do have to pay for these. The first two sets of filters are free though, so that's just what I use. Um, if you want a little more personal, you do have your typical photo editing stuff with your, like uh, your adjustments, your crops, your blurs, whatever. And then, what makes this app really awesome, besides the fact that you can like lay it all out and edit your photos right in here, is if I open it up, it's basically like an Instagram post. So here you have your caption, and then what makes this app a lifesaver is that you can save your tags. So I do tag all my photos, helps me get found, and you can save all your tags in here. So I have a group of tags for each of my animals, or any topics that I post about, like zookeeping or the nature center. I have a group of tags for all of those. So like, this is Samoa's. Not Samoa's, this is a picture of Phoenix. For I click on a different selfie. So I say, hi, this is Phoenix. And then, I come down, I find Phoenix's tag in here, tag group, click on that, and it automatically inserts all of the tags into the post for me. So they're all there. And then I can come down and hit schedule post. I'm doing this without actually looking at the screen. This is difficult. Oh, here we go. Turn it on. And then you click it. And then you set the day and time. And then, unfortunately, this app doesn't automatically post it for you. My life would be so much easier if it did. But it does send you a notification at that time and says, it's time to post. So then when you go to the app and you click on the photo you want to post, and you click the little, like, export icon down here. I don't know if you can see it. It says caption copied and it says post to Instagram. When you click post to Instagram, it opens it up just like a post and then in where you put your caption, you hit paste, paste your caption and tags for you and then you just hit post. So those two apps have been like my Instagram lifesaver. It reminds me to post on Instagram. It allows me to plan out my posts and schedule them all. So that has been like the huge lifesaver for me. So another tip, if you're doing this just for fun, don't worry about it. But if you're doing this on a little more of a serious note, on Instagram, I find my clean, sharp images do a lot better than my kind of grainy, not so greatly planned out pictures. Um, YouTube, it really depends on your content. My most viewed video is my iguana care guide. That was one of the first things I filmed. My quality sucked, my lighting sucked, it still has the most views out of all my videos. But I don't give the quality credit. It's the content. There's not a lot of really serious, legit iguana care guides. So mine gets found a lot. And so that's why I have those views. If my, con or if my quality was better, I probably would have done even a little better. Um, but for the most part, like all my beginning videos, not to very good quality. I was trying to use a camera that's meant for photography, not really videography, so it didn't work out very well. And then I switched to using my iPhone, and iPhones work really well for filming videos. Pretty much for the past year and a half, all of my videos have been filmed on my iPhone. And I don't think the quality was horrible. I mean, for a while there wasn't too, too good. It was okay. You know the big tip? Everyone says, use natural lighting. Film in front of a window. That will give you crisper, nicer quality. It wasn't until my boyfriend got me this ring light that my quality definitely improved even more. Um, and then now, as you can see, the quality is much better. And that's because my boyfriend bought me a very, very nice um, filming camera that a lot of YouTubers use. And it has made so much of a difference, at least I think so. But again, if you're just doing this for like fun and you're not really worried about it, don't worry about it. If people want to watch you, they're going to watch you. If they like the content you're putting out, they're going to watch you no matter what. 
Now the most important part of being a pet influencer is to not let drama or negative comments get to you. When you're on YouTube, negativity is like inevitable. It's gonna happen. And usually it's things that don't even make sense. These are people that have never met you before. They don't know anything about you. For the most part, when I get negative comments, I don't think they even watch the video because the comments make no sense, no correlation with the video at all. So the most important part is to not let that get to you. And I know it's really hard. It's hard to hear negative things, especially when you know they're not true. The best thing is to ignore them and move on. Personally, I take after my mom. If someone's like, oh, I didn't like that you did this, or I don't like your hair, blah, blah, blah. I just comment. I'm like, sorry you feel that way. Tell her to it. I'm not going to let them get the best of me. I'm not going to feed into it. I'm not going to give them attention. I'm saying, sorry you feel that way. That's all there is to it. And then conversation is done. Now, if they're like super ridiculous, degrading comments, you can delete them. I've deleted, I think I've only deleted one comment ever from YouTube. And it was someone that was just so incredibly rude. They got mad at me because I did my hair and makeup and cleaned my room. The video had nothing to do with that. It was about the animal that I had with me. And I was like, I'm at the zoo every single day. It was the middle of summer. I'm like, I'm sweating my butt off. This is the one day of the week I'm not at the zoo. And I want to feel clean. I want to look nice. I want to wear real clothes that aren't khakis and covered in sweat. God forbid I make myself look nice one day out of the week. And God forbid my room is clean. Oh no. Like, shame on me for having a clean room. So like... 99.9 99% of the time you get native comments they're just people that are unhappy with themselves that are bored and have nothing better to do so don't let it get to you just remember that they don't know you you don't know them they're not important if they're hiding behind a screen trying to tear you down what kind of person are they like they are not worth your time and I'll admit when I get negative comments it does affect me for like 10 seconds. You know, I feel a little sad. I'm like, oh, why does this person think that? Like, hmm. And then I'm like, I don't know them. They don't know me. I'm never gonna meet them. I'm never gonna, like, talk to them in person. I'm never gonna, like, have a phone call with them and be like, hey, how's it going? They don't matter to me. Sorry, but it's true. So why am I gonna let this anonymous person I'm never gonna know? ruin my day or my life you know when you're in this community for a while you build a ton of friendships some of my best friends i met through instagram through my reptiles recently i did a tiktok challenge with a bunch of other really awesome women in the reptile community it was so much fun it was meant to be fun it brought us together we made some new friends from it and it actually it got a lot of support a lot of people enjoyed it a lot of people said they were going to do it and that's what we wanted we wanted to start this challenge we wanted to see other people do it we wanted it to bring everyone together but there's just you know a couple people that got upset about it and i'm like it's just some some girls having fun doing a tiktok challenge what's the big deal there's always gonna be people out there that are stuck in their head that think they're fantastic that have their own issues to deal with and they're gonna take it out on you for no reason don't let it bother you you know the most important thing as hobby is to support one another and just to have fun and that's all i ever try to do is just to have fun support my fellow reptile keepers make new friends and so you have to keep in mind what your goals are when the negativity comes why did you do this don't let that one person ruin all of this for you. Plus, if you don't give them the satisfaction, then it was a waste of time for them, and they're probably gonna end up feeling pretty stupid. So just know who you are, know what your goals are, stick to them, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Don't let anyone bring you down. There's always gonna be haters, you're not gonna please everyone, and that's really hard to accept sometimes. But you're not gonna please everyone. So if someone gives you negativity and they're like, peace out, 
Just know you don't want that person here anyway. They give nothing of importance to you. And kind of finishing and topping this off, negative comments and reactions and thumbs downs on videos are still interaction with your video. That still helps you out. That gives you views, that gives you interaction, that makes your video more viewable on YouTube because YouTube's like, oh, this video is getting a lot of interaction. We're going to have it be seen more. Even if it's negative stuff, they're giving you that interaction. You need to get your video seen. So you should almost thank them, really. All right, so those are my top tips for being a pet influencer. If you have more to add, leave them in the comments below. There's people trying to start channels and Instagrams every single day so any tips that we can give them you know because the learning process we all learn along the way so why not help out those that are starting out help them learn a little quicker than we did so hopefully this video helped any of you that are looking to start a pet channel or pet instagram if it did i would love it if you gave this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss more videos and as always thank you and we'll see you for the next video